potential friends! Welcome back to the Black Nook with me, Alexandra. Oop, oop. So I just got out of the shower for the first time after three solid days of wearing the same onesie and crouching on this bed surrounded by books and bags of candy from Bulk Barn while I desperately tried to finish writing a 17-page reflection paper for grad school. Why are Canadian plays so depressing! But I did finish it, and I sent it, and now I am free! Until the final project is due. But I looked pretty shit last video, so I should probably actually get dressed and ready for this one. Okay, so, I'm doing an MFA in creative writing because I love studying useless things that are definitely gonna get me a job. And I want to tell you guys about grad school. Grad school has been... No! 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 Fun! Here's what they don't tell you about grad school. One. Almost everyone is mid-30s and up. They have kids, they have a job, and you're gonna feel like a toddler dressing up in your mom's power suit around them. Two, remember how stupid you felt in undergrad? Yeah, that goes up by about 10,000 in grad school. Yeah, I really feel the readings this semester are lacking. It's just, it's the kind of stuff I'd read in my spare time, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> totally. I. I definitely can books. <laughs> okay. A three. I actually don't have a third one. It just two didn't seem enough for a list. So just <whistles> the best way to get through grad school that I've found is just to get used to the mood whiplash of it all, and remember that probably no one can tell how much you are shitting your pants at any given opportunity. I mean, on my very first day, like my first class of grad school, brand new student, I had to go to the bathroom and desperately sob. Like, I'm talking truly uncontrollable sobs, just like shaking the whole stall, just tears just literally down my face <laughs> for around 40 minutes out of an hour long lunch before I could come out of the bathroom with like makeup gone all smudged around my ass and make my way to my professor's office hours where I proceeded then to continue to cry except on her which was great I'm sure she wanted that <laughs> and all of that happened because I said one stupid thing in class. Seriously, it was like three sentences long of an insight. And I felt all the judging eyes turn to look at me. And I just snapped right into a panic attack. That had happened about an hour before lunch, so I just tuned out of class completely. And I had to start writing a list of good things in my notebook so that I wouldn't start breaking down and crying in the middle of class. <laughs> I actually still have that list. <clears throat> a list of good things by Alexandra Jones. The sky in early morning. Tara's hair. Spaghetti. The persistence of life to continue despite the odds. Electrical lighting. I mean, I'm not wrong about that one, but that's kind of a weird thing to put. Anyway. This is where the mood whiplash bit kicks in, because you'd think that with that start to the day and to all of grad school, I would just go home, curl up and die, maybe start thinking about dropping out. But you know what happened instead? I went out for drinks with classmates. I even shared a car with four of them who already knew each other and managed to make conversation and not sound like a gibbering fool. So I just found the postmodernist implications of the form within that novel to be quite intriguing. Alexandra, you you tell us what what novels or authors have you discovered this past summer? Uh, me, uh, well, um, can I get another drink? I mean, not like a, a complete gibbering fool. 
Still, I think it's a feat to go from crying in the bathroom so hard that when people entered the bathroom, they would hear me and they would leave, <laughs> to only like a couple hours later, happily drunk and talking to people who I had just met that day. You gotta be elastic in grad school. You gotta be a chameleon. And hey, it's easy to assume that everyone in your class is brilliant and they all think that you are stupid. But here's a secret I discovered. As the weeks and months went on, I realized that a lot of my classmates actually felt the same as me. And not only that, many of them couldn't even tell that I'm as dumb as two bricks. So just a couple weeks ago, I had to lead a seminar in one of my courses, the same course that I cried in that first day, where we analyze two readings and I lead the class in like discussion about it. I hate presentations. The more eyes that I feel on me at once, the more I feel the cards of the, the void. void. And it didn't help that I was the last presenter of the whole semester. Ironically, that was because I spent so much time crying in the bathroom that first day of class that I didn't get to the professor's office hours soon enough to sign up for an earlier presentation date. <laughs> My whole semester was bookended by two disasters. But anyway. I start my presentation by being very honest, very real. I just want to uh, apologize that we're ending on me as a presenter after all the great presentations we've seen by you guys. Um, I'm going to ramble for a little bit, which hopefully isn't too traumatizing for y'all's ears. Uh, but uh, the probably the most interesting stuff is going to be when other people give their input. So uh, feel free to do what I'm going to do, which is just to black out whenever I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> yup, I actually said that. And worse, I scripted it. I wrote down a joke dragging myself because I'm so bad at presentations that I couldn't trust myself to remember it. But presentation gets underway, and I'm doing my best to speak clearly and look up from my piece of paper and ask good questions. And then I ask a question, and everyone just kind of looks at me blankly. And I just start having a full-blown meltdown. I'm talking, my body goes hot, my voice has gone all shaky, my eyes are starting to cloud, and I'm holding onto my dignity by my fucking fingernails, just screaming at myself in my head like, don't you cry, don't you fucking cry, not a single tear, do you hear me, not a tear. Yeah, uh, Zach, I saw you had your, your hand up earlier, um, you suck those tears right back in your skull or I will kill you myself. This goes on for maybe 10 minutes. I am sweating buckets. Like this is the most physical internal battle I have ever had in my life. And then my professor, who was sitting next to me, right next to me, which did not help the nervousness for this because there is nowhere to hide. She leans over, lets me know that I'm getting close to time on my presentation. So after the next dude has finished talking in the discussion, I just say, okay, that's about all the time we have for my section, so uh, <laughs> you don't have to listen to me talk anymore, thank god. <laughs> uh, anyway, I'm just gonna, you know, go to the bathroom now that we're done, so uh. <laughs> and I get up and I motor my way out of that room to the sound of applause. As soon as I close the door to the classroom, I just dissolved into tears. And I booked it to the bathroom, that holy place, where a woman can cry as much as she wants. But here's the funny thing. After the class, multiple people in my class came up to me to tell me that they liked my presentation. To congratulate me on how well they thought I did in my presentation. And a girl even overheard me crying in the bathroom and said that she had no idea that I was upset during the presentation, that I'd in fact seemed confident and charismatic. And I got my grade back the other day from this presentation and I got an A. <laughs> Guys, fake it till you make it is real. I literally had a 10 minute panic attack, anxiety attack, something attack, in the middle of a presentation I was leading, and no one noticed. Honestly, where is my Oscar? Just say.
just like, just like. And somehow, despite my struggles and late night crying jags and worrying that I'm not good enough to be here, I'm actually doing kind of okay in grad school. But anyway, I gotta go because I need to send an email to my professor um, about mentor selections for our thesis, and I also need to send a work-related email that I should have sent uh, two weeks ago about a thing, and uh, I need to, <laughs> yeah, start rewriting an hour-long play for a second draft that's due in four days, which is, in fact, the same day that Star Wars comes out. I take it back. I'm not doing okay. Where's my list of good things? Where? Where's my list of good things? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, just definitely. I can, I can read. <laughs> yeah, yes, I definitely enjoy reading academic papers and all the time. Just what I do before bed. <laughs> now I'm gonna get a cup of tea and a really long academic paper. I'm definitely not five readings behind. <laughs> what do you mean you read this in your spare time, David? Goddamn. Oh, um, uh, um, yeah, the, all the authors you guys said, all of them, I've, I also read those, uh, words. Yep. How about you just keep talking about the book you read? That sounded great. Have you read the Song of Achilles? It's gay. It's tragic. Shelved in the section for teenagers. Other things that I wrote on my list of good things in that first day of class. Deodorant, which is keeping my fear stink at bay. Writing, because I am much better at that than speaking. Air conditioning, which I wish this room had. <laughs> God, this is, this is riveting stuff. Oh my God, I forgot I wrote this really weird, like, poem one day when I was depressed in class. <laughs> well, one line of this is, what the fuck is two twain? Which I guess was something we were talking about in class. Still don't know what the fuck that is. It would be cool to get a tattoo. The sun doesn't have a color. Thoughts from Alexandra. At least these pants are comfy. This poem I wrote in class is actually called Opinions on Poetry by someone who wants to throw up and then pass out. <laughs> ah, can you write something you hate? There are more lines to this. I'm just picking out the dumbest ones. Fucking pretentious is just a line just by itself. Fucking pretentious. A poem by Alexandra. If anyone reads over my shoulder, I'll kill them. Can I leave yet? <laughs> this is a really bad poem. Just to be clear, I'm not in this creative writing program for poetry or I'd be fucked. <laughs> <clears throat> a poem by Alexandra. Poetry buries me. Poetry says, you are stupid again and again. A mother's words. What does that mean? <laughs> I wrote this and I have no fucking clue. I, I repeat, I hate poetry in diff three different lines in here. I hate that I wrote that. I think I'm trying to write a poem. I hate poetry. It's so vague. Stop dancing around the subject. It's been 24 hours of constant almost nausea now. That seems bad. Oh wait, I remember. This is when I had food poisoning, but I didn't know it was food poisoning. Anyway, I've, <laughs> I've totally gotten distracted by this, by this thing. I don't remember where I was. Um...